Morning, everyone. We'll get started. Thank you all for being here and participating in county government. I'll call the Apollo County Board of Commissioners work session to order on this October the 25th, 2022. And uh, we welcome uh, Judge O'Connor as an elected official here. And if you'll turn off your mobile devices, just got the sign up sheet. And I'm going to ask uh, County Attorney Jason Phillips if he'll lead us in a Invocation and pledge the flag. Dear Lord, we just come to you now once again in this room that we've gathered so often. And Lord, as always, we ask that your presence be here. We'd ask that the wisdom that, that, that only you have, uh, that you share some of that with us here as we consider items and as we make decisions. Uh, Father, just uh, to help these commissioners to review items and digest all that's been in front of them so that they can see the clear path forward in making decisions on these matters. Lord, we'd ask that you'd be with our election staff as we are in the midst of another large election. Father, these are all elections of change, both amongst the candidates, Father, um, that new faces run, incumbents run. Lord, but consistently, Father, our staff through the elections office has to make sure that they do the job they've been asked to do consistent with the law, consistent with your will. Father, we ask that you would specially equip them to do it, protect them from any problems, Lord, protect them from any people that may be difficult to deal with as they do their jobs, equip them in a special way to carry this out. And Father, we just, we just ask that you would give them wisdom and guidance and the energy uh, to carry this through so that elections are done in a godly way and in a way that reflects honor upon you. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jason, for starting us off right. Uh, the minutes uh, from October 11th, the work session minutes and the October 11th board meeting minutes are available for review. Our team polling segment this morning is, is about the Sheriff's Office K-9 Memorial dedication that occurred a couple of weeks ago. We'll look at that now. Today we unveiled our brand new K-9 Memorial uh, here at the Sheriff's Office. This is a, just a monument that uh, we've been working on for quite some time as a former K-9 handler. Um, I, along with the current K-9 handlers, have worked to help make this a, a possibility and help this to come to fruition today. I went to the Paulding County Sheriff's Office here and asked them how we could help them and if there was anything that they needed and they approached me with the idea of having this new canine memorial installed here at the new sheriff's office. So we wanted to step in and help with that and with the help of wonderful sponsors, our car show participants, and we're able to raise the funds to provide them with this new canine memorial here in front of the new sheriff's office and we were just thrilled to be able to do that. Being a handler is the most amazing job I've ever had but it's also a very dangerous job. We're always the first ones in and the last ones out in law enforcement. Uh, we're the ones that follow the dogs into the danger and they do it selflessly. We know the danger but we go on and do it anyhow. We love what we do. We're also a uh, PR department at the sheriff's office. We love coming out and speaking to the community and letting people know what we do and what the dogs do, and they truly deserve to be honored because they're really the ones that put in the hard work. We just follow behind them. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe the monument is in honor of Jess Rousey, uh, Samantha's dad. Um, so that was Samantha Glass, the, the first lady that was talking. So 
she did that in honor of her, her dad and of course the animals also <clears throat> all right so uh, the board of commissioners would like to present the uh, public safety appreciation award to uh, Tamitha Springer uh, the administrative assistant with the Paulding E911 department and I see David Mumford coming up to the lectern to tell us some more about uh, if, if Tamitha seems a little shocked it's because she had no idea this was going on today <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually lie to my employees but in this case uh, in order to get her here I told a little white lie that I was going to be speaking on radios and I needed somebody to make notes so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is a shock I'm assuming yeah, okay it was supposed to be so it's my pleasure to present this award to Tamitha. Uh, she's an administrative assistant at the 911 Center. But beyond that, she's a, a very vital member of an important team. Uh, a lot of times we hear about communications officers that work behind the scenes. We don't see them up in the public like we do the firefighters and the uh, police officers. And the same can be said for Tamitha. She works behind the scenes uh, supporting the operations of the 911 Center, <clears throat> making sure that all the members and all the administrative staff have everything we need to do to get our jobs done. She began her employment with 911 in November of 2016, and she retired from the United States Navy and come to work for us. And so she's now approaching her sixth anniversary with the county. Uh, when she first started out, she had the, uh, the duty, usual duties of an of a administrative assistant. And then since that time, she's actually expanded. Uh, she started out by assisting with open records requests, and now she's pretty much doing those on her own. She acts as our open records custodian for the most part and handles those without, uh, without help from, from uh, other folks. She also uh, has recently taken on the uh, responsibilities of our pre-employment testing. So she administers our pre-employment test to all of our, our new hires, or the, before they're actually hired. Um, recently, she went to a, <clears throat> a class down in, was it Savannah? Yeah, for the Open Records, uh, Georgia Records Association Conference. And along with that, she brought back some uh, good information and, and tips on streamlining our open records processes. And she's also uh, working on getting her certification as a, as a uh, open records, what, uh, certified, records. certified records manager. Yeah, so she's working on that. Um, so without really doing the job of a communications officer, she has a very intimate knowledge of how they do their jobs and what they need to, to, to do their job successfully. She works on keeping their equipment in order. Um, just, there's just a, a host of things that she does for our employees. Among her other duties, she takes uh, active roles in planning and public safety telecommunications week activities, uh, our other holiday activities, Christmas celebrations. She comes in early and she stays late, uh, whatever it takes to get the job done, and uh, she, she to get everything done in a timely manner. That's her, her big goal. And she's always seeking new opportunities to gain new skills and uh, better perform her duties. On a lighter note, uh, oftentimes, we can hear her singing in her office as she goes about her daily, <laughs> her daily duties. So kind of uh, uplifting and a positive thing to hear somebody sing uh, and, and knowing that they're, you know, pretty happy with their job, at least at that particular moment. We all have our moments. So, <laughs> so ta she's a very well-rounded and well-respected and valuable member of, of our team, and we're proud to have her part of Team Paulding. So congratulations, Tamitha. Tamitha, I'm going to kind of look this way at the, the panel. Uh, I get the privilege of reading the award here, which says Public Safety Appreciation Award, presented to Tamitha Springer. Is that the way you pronounce her name? Okay. In recognition of outstanding service to our community, uh, presented by the Pauley County Board of Commissioners this 25th day of October, 2022. And we've all signed it, and we're all so proud of you. So thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. You shake that hand. I'm sure I missed some stuff that she did. Tamitha, we had a veterans breakfast this morning with uh, Congresswoman Green speaking, and Angela and I had to eat for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no invited guests this morning, a bit of awards, none. 
uh, reports from committees and departments. We completed those previous meetings, uh, public participation on agenda items. Um, no one has signed up to speak. Um, the consent agenda is, <coughs> let's see, five different items. Item number two is to authorize the chairman to enter into a development agreement with Pine Hill Investments LTD and uh, DR Horton Incorporated uh, regarding the access to Sheffield Highlands Unit 1 subdivision. This property is located adjacent to Cartersville Highway and Shady Grove Church Road uh, in Post 4. And uh, Mr. Jones is responsible for that one. Item number three is to authorize the chairman to enter into a development agreement with AMH Development LLC in the amount of $59,150 for participation in off-site roadway improvements on Nebo Road. And this project is, all, is located in post three. Um, item number four is to adopt ordinance 22-13, amending article six, which is Broadway Ready Community. Uh, of Chapter 62 of the Code of Ordinances of Paulding County. Uh, Ms. Lippman is responsible for that one. Item number five is uh, to approve the 2023 Paulding County Board of Commissioners designated holiday schedule. Baker Street, I didn't think we were going to have any holidays next year. <laughs> no comment. And uh, item number six, authorize the chairman to sign documents accepting the VOCA grant on behalf of the commissioners and the Pauling Judicial Circuit. So would any of the commissioners like to move any of these uh, to open to uh, new business for further discussion or questions? I just have a question on number three, if that's okay and appropriate for me to ask that now. Do we have to wait? No, that's fine. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure, um, Mr. Jones, that I understand which uh, subdivision there's so many going on down there I want to make sure I have the right one uh, so is this the subdivision that uh, kind of abuts Nebo Elementary School that is correct it's that subdivision Hickory Point subdivision okay just trying to keep them all straight make sure I understand and this this is an agreement that was kind of part of their stipulations as, as when it was rezoning. approved back several months ago yes it was uh, I believe in 2000 July of 21 um, that went through the rezoning period and that was part of the stipulations that were approved at that point in time okay great thank you thank you that's all thanks George we have no old business this morning uh, under new business item number seven is discuss action to approve change order number one for Magnum contracting as part of the Mulberry Rock uh, Park phase two improvement project this is for additional clearing and grading and earthwork in the amount of 334,600, let me start over, $334,764. This project's located in post two and funded by SPLOST. Mr. Michael Justice. Good morning. morning. We have an opportunity actually to get a little bit ahead of ourselves. Uh, as you're aware, we're in phase two of development of Mulberry Rock now. When you take measurements from GIS, you don't always get actual quantities. And what we have found, um, if you're familiar with the park at all, you're familiar with the dirt mounds that we've had saved there for a number of years for this project. In actuality, there's more dirt there than we um, had accounted for, and we need to get it out of the way for phase two. Um, so the easiest thing to look at was moving forward into a part of phase three where we can do some initial grading and clearing and moving that dirt and creating some pad space already there. So we're kind of uh, at a point where we can get ahead a little bit. Um, it will never be any cheaper than it is now with the uh, the crews already being there um, so the the numbers are, are very close as far as units uh, unit cost as to what the initial contract called for there's a little bit of an increase but it's been over a year since we um, received those numbers and awarded that contract so in a nutshell we requested that uh, this number be uh, gotten together for us 
so that we can get that dirt out of the way to continue working in phase two and we'll actually be going a little bit ahead of ourselves into phase three. The money is there um, as part of our SPLOS budget, so we'd like for you to consider approving that so we can move forward. And phase three will be cheaper then, right? 300 and some odd thousand dollars, yes, sir. <laughs> Any questions? How many yards did it end up being? It's about 20,000 cubic yards excess. Thank you, Michael. Yes, sir. Thank you all. New business number eight is discuss action to approve the following streets for perpetual maintenance by the county. Ms. Littman to tell us about these subdivisions. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. Um, today we have three subdivisions with about seven streets that have been inspected by DOT, Community Development, and Water System, and are ready to be accepted by the county for perpetual maintenance. Be happy to answer any questions. If there are any. <laughs> are all, all of these streets uh, are finished? So they have yes. the binder. So. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. And new business item number nine is discuss action to approve the purchase of a new pump in the amount of eighty-four thousand eight hundred ninety-four dollars and fifty-eight cents from Xylem Water Systems. USA Incorporated to replace the damaged pump at the Riverwood Pump Station located in Post 1. Mr. Ray Wooten to report. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all? Um, what this item is for is we're looking the Riverwood Pump Station, uh, which is in the Riverwood subdivision, uh, pumps for the residents at Riverwood and some surrounding areas and um, we have had some damage well to the second pump we replaced a pump here last year and we had one pump that was rebuilt and it was damaged and the parts to replace the existing pump as well as the labor is $72,873.09. We can get a brand new pump that has a warranty on it and it's $84,894.58. The new pump has 100% warranty for the first 18 months, drops to 50% for 19 to 39 months and 25% from 40 to 60 months. The the pump we purchased last year is still in working order. This gives us redundancy at the station and it matches the existing pump. Um, we also looked at other providers of pumps and um, the other pumps that are of this size we have found are also overseas and this is the pump that we need to replace um, at this station and this asylum pump seems to be the one that we need for the station um, uh, Again, we're requesting this pump from xylem water system USA in the amount of eighty four thousand Eight hundred ninety four dollars and fifty eight cents Probably a dumb question Ray he's pulled the other one out and throw it away or repair it well when we pull a pump out we take all the reusable parts that we can actually keep and those are held on the side so that if there's any damage to pumps of this size in the future we have different rings different casings different things that we can use but uh, the parts that are damaged beyond repair are just no longer used the uh, heavy debris that broke the propeller I mean have y'all figure out where that material is coming from we have basically two sections of development of new construction along with homeowners that use this pump we haven't been able to isolate however we are continuing to have flushing where we see any areas where we have debris come into the line to help minimize so that we don't get any damage going forward If we are able to identify a source, then that's who we go to get 
compensated for replacing a pump. Any other questions? Thanks so much, Mr. Wooden. Thank you. Concludes the regular business. Uh, no one signed up for uh, speaking on non-agenda items. It's the first time in a while, huh? Uh, any any comments from commissioners? I got a couple of things. In the whole month of October, breast cancer month. Yeah, I meant to wear a pink shirt and I forgot. But uh, uh, as most of you know, Commissioner Caker has been through that life-threatening challenge. Uh, and sometimes uh, I think I'm supposed to know everything, but something occurred last week at Gray's Mill Park in Hiram that I didn't know anything about. It was, uh, it's called TLS, the uh, Tranquil Life uh, Counseling that they have there on Highway uh, 92. Uh, and they had a walk called uh, uh, Out of Darkness and it mainly focuses on uh, suicide prevention. They have 11 trained professional counselors and uh, quite a number of families are involved in it. And I really was uh, just uneducated on the whole thing. Uh, John Grant put it together. I don't know if that was through the chamber or just on his own, but uh, he kind of led the charge there. And uh, the comment was made and it's true in my family uh, and friends that I know, just about every family's been touched by suicide or, you know, something going on in their in their family. So <clears throat> the uh, the other thing I was going to announce is we've got some actresses in the room, and Saturday night they'll be performing. Next Saturday night. No, this Saturday night. This Saturday night. Yeah. So they're going to do a murder mystery with a, it's like a dinner theater. And I don't know if it's sold out or not, but uh, we, we saw on the screen earlier, really the star actor uh, who was well picked, I guess, uh, Ashley Henson. So I, I think it's some romantic scenes with him and Sandy. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Yeah. You'll have to come to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. And I'm getting the dirty look from our county attorney. <laughs> Anybody else have something on their mind? I would like to invite the public to come. Uh, Concerned Women for America, which is a national uh, group, is bringing their bus tour to Paulding County. Uh, right down here to uh, the courthouse across from the playground uh, outside of the area that has anything to do with voting um, and you are welcome to come and uh, be a part of that. The name of the tour is called She Prays, She Votes, but men are also welcome. Uh, so uh, men and women uh, come on down today from 3 to 5. Thank you. And then I got a couple things also. Um, this Saturday is the Trick or Treat Village at the Paulding Meadows Park from two to seven, so uh, maybe before y'all see the mystery dinner show, then uh, you can come out there and enjoy that with your kids and family. But And then also this Wednesday at the Burnt Hickory Park at six o'clock will be the second meeting for the uh, public input for the Richland Creek Reservoir. Uh, so kind of inter very interested to see what they come, <clears throat> what the input was from the first meeting. So. If you can, make it, please, 6 o'clock, Burnt Hickory Park. Thanks. You okay that down there? You still awake? Good. <laughs> All right, everybody's good. Uh, we don't have an executive session. Um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Commissioner Cakers or second? Second. Second by Commissioner Stover. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, we stand adjourned.